So this is the, the era of the Sahaba. And the same thing with the, the Tabi'een. There were seven called Fuqaha al Madina, as Saba. So Sayyid bin Musayyib, Al Qa'al, Allahumma Sallu Rasulillah, Sulaiman bin Yasar, Kharij bin Zayd bin Thabita, Ubaidullah bin Abdullah bin Mas'ud, Sayyid bin Musayyib, I mentioned, Urwa, Urwa bin Zubair, Abu Bakr. Bin Ubaidullah bin Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, which I mentioned, Abu Bakr bin Abdurrahman, Allahumma Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I think I mentioned seven. But there were seven of them, who Kharija bin Zayd bin Thabit, who the other Tabi'een would come to for fatawa, more so than any others. And again, when they came to them for fatawa, they didn't ask them for their delil, they gave them a ruling based on their understanding of Qur'an and Sunnah. And they took that ruling and they worked with it. And so that was taqlid. Ittiba'a hukm al-ghayr bidun ma'rifati dalilihi. Following the rulings of qualified scholars without knowing their proofs. So this is something, again, that existed from the earliest times of Islam. As the companions spread out, as the hadith were gathered, and there was a, a well-known corpus that transcended the knowledge of individual co companions. So their various ahadith were gathered, you had greater degrees of specialization and you had the codification as illustrated by Imam Shafi's book, al risala that uh, gathered rules and principles to interpret and make sense of that growing mass of hadith, of the Qur'an, of the various rulings of the preceding generations, what they agreed on, ijma, and that became the basis of madahib. And so in the generation of the Tabi Tabi'in, some figures mentioned by Dr. Shadi, you had figures like Sufyan bin Uyayna, Sufyan bin Thawri, uh, Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, al awzai and others who had their individual schools based on the principles, uh, Abu Hanifa amongst them also, based on the principles they used to interpret and understand and extract rulings from the Qur'an and from the Hadith. Some of their schools passed on, as Dr. Shadi mentioned, and some of their schools endured. There are two reasons. Uh, one he mentioned, or uh, before that though, in the Qur'an, we're told concerning the things we don't know. To ask. Ask whom? Those qualified to answer. Ask the people of knowledge if you do not know yourself. Ask those who know if you don't know. And trust in their knowledge. And thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they had the time and the circumstance to delve deeply into these matters. Because, as we mentioned, specialization is the foundation of civilization. If we were all required to go directly to the Quran and Sunnah, and then do what? That's, that's the part that's usually not mentioned. Extract rulings from it. Then we would have to, to know all of the Quran, and specifically all of the verses with legislative implication. And we have to be masters of the Arabic language. And we'll give you a simple, a simple example of how Arabic comes into play uh, very shortly. We would have to be masters of the Arabic language. We would ha have to be masters of, uh, in terms of knowing which verses abrogated others. We'd have to know uh, when, what instances, again something Dr. Shadi po pointed out, when a a verse qualifies a hadith, or when a hadith in the view of some can qualify a verse. 
All of that we would have to know and it would, it would involve a lifetime of study because we would have to all become mujtahidun. We would have to become a Shafi or a Malik or an Awza'i or Sufyan al thawri or Sufyan bin Uyayna or, or Alayf bin Sa'ad. We would have to become like those people. Even if we possessed the, the intellectual acumen, if we possessed the memory, if we possessed, if we were blessed with the tawfiq that they had, but it would be a lifetime of study and none of us would have time to become a mechanic. None of us would have time to become a doctor. None of us would be ha have time to become lawyers. None of us would have time to become engineers. None of us would have time to become mechanics. None of, none of us would be, have time to become teachers in other realms of endeavor. And civilization as we know it, Muslim society will grind to a halt. And so because of that, Allah Ta'ala has blessed some people with that opportunity and He's told others to go consult them. فَسَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعَلَمُونَ so you're a doctor, go ask the people who know. Mechanic, ask the people who know. Engineer, ask the people who know. Butcher, baker, candlestick maker, ask the people who know if you know not. This is integral to our religion. Otherwise, we enter on a very, very dangerous course where we go to these sources without the qualifications needed to truly understand and interpret them. And we'll end up with a mess even more terrible than the mess that we currently find ourselves in. Because everyone doesn't pursue that course. 